So in our last example, we looked at how to get a CSV file into our code. Let's extend this idea a little bit and map instead of um, just one um, column of data, we can do two that are side by side in our same visualization. Um, so I like to work with this future projection uh, climate data. This is temperature. And you know we can click on the file here and view it. And it, you know it's not in the easiest to read format, but this is really nice. We can kind of quickly preview it. Um, let's see if I can make you a little more room. There we go. Um, and we can see in our header row, these different um, pieces of data that are stored in our file. You would need to do some research again with your data to figure out what these all mean, because oftentimes they're in this kind of cryptic format. Um, but I know from reading the documentation that RCP45 is um, one model, computer model for future temperature that's based on the lower end of emissions um, and RCP85 is the higher end. So they give us actually these two lines that we'll see uh, plotting side by side, give us kind of this range of potential temperature, which is really interesting. Um, so I've got my template again here. I deleted a few things, um, but let's walk through how we would uh, do this. So I've changed my file name here. Um, make sure everything is typed correct. Um, you may find me do this wrong in this demo um, here as well. It's very common you're going to run into those errors. So you want to make sure everything is, is exactly the way it appears. OK, um, so for sure, first, we want to create our, um, our labels. And this is going to be the same for both of our um, pieces of data because they're both in the same range of years. Uh, so we just need that. But then for our actual data itself, um, we're going to make two lists. Uh, before, we called this just data. But now I want to call this something uh, a little clearer so I can keep track. Uh, so the first one will be lower emissions, and the second one will be higher emissions. So these are both empty lists that we will now populate with our data. Um, so we can go ahead and actually, you know what? Before we even do this, let's print our data and just make sure it's working correctly. So console.log, and um, now you'll notice we get an error here because we haven't um, plugged in all of our chart.js stuff yet. Let's just comment this out for now. Um, and you'll see, again, it prints this object, 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 and you can sort of take a look at it inside the, um, inside the console here, which is really, really helpful for seeing what's inside that data. OK. So I've got my labels, my um, two data sets. Now let's go through it again using a for loop. And for sure, if this seems uh, like confusing to you because you haven't done a lot of code before or JavaScript, um, you can just copy a lot of this from the template and modify it to fit your data. So I'm going through the whole thing. Just like last time, I want to grab the year. So this will be loaded data I at, uh, with the name year. And then we're going to add this to our labels. So labels.push year. Cool. So that's just like before. Now we want to grab our two different pieces of data from um, for the lower emissions and higher emissions. So I'm going to call this lower. And this is loaded data i dot. And then if I look here, I can see it's RCP 45 weighted mean. And I want this. This does have to be exactly the way it's written in the file for this to work. Um, so copy paste is probably smart here. And then we can do the same thing for the higher, except this is 85. And for us to verify, let's just do another console.log, uh, lower and higher. And we get a bunch of errors. Um, you'll see down here, it's um, it says undefined, undefined, and there's 94 of them, one for each line in our data. Undefined means there's no value there. This is not good. Um, and I will tell you, I spent a long time figuring out why this wasn't working. There's a couple of reasons, and they all stem back to our file itself. So if we look at the header here, um, the comma then is followed by a space. This seems intuitive. Our brains know that that space is just a separator for visual purposes, and that the real important part is this name here. The computer, on the other hand, is a dumb robot. It doesn't know any context. It has no sense of what you're trying to do. It just does literally what you tell it. In this case, then, when I try to load my data, it's grabbing this as the column name, including the space. So when in my sketch here, um, 
I put in this text, it, it's literally thinking it's that, and it doesn't find it because it's looking for the space in the beginning. Now, I can't include a space here um, because of the way JavaScript works. So what I really need to do is go into my file here and just change it. And luckily, we can do this right inside P5.js. So I just delete these spaces. Data cleanup is a super common thing to have to do. Data sets are almost never in a, the right format. Um, so this is a really common thing you might run into, and it's why I wanted to show you this. Um, now, you also notice there are spaces here. Those won't be a problem. I'm just going to save this. And let's run it again and print those values. So now I'm seeing my lower value is showing up, but my higher value is still undefined. And once again, I spent a lot of time, very frustratingly, trying to figure this out. The answer, if we look closely here, is that whoever created this file included a space here instead of an underscore. Once again, I'm going to fix this. So if you run into problems like this, go back to your data, look very carefully. And then if you have problems, you can email me, you can post a question in the comments here, you know, you'll be able to sort it out. It just takes some time. Or if you're feeling really frustrated, do what I think I should do, but never do, which is take a break, walk around, have a coffee, and then come back. Okay. Now we're seeing our data correct. This looks good. Awesome. Then the last thing that we need to do, just because we've loaded the data, now we have to stick it into our list. So I'm going to say lower emissions dot push and higher. And I wanted to show you this, yeah, because this is stuff that happens all the time. So it's not exciting maybe to watch errors happen, but I want you to see that this is part of the process. Okay, another sanity check just to make sure we're gonna just print lower emissions, make sure our data got there, super. We see a list of numbers that looks great. Okay, now we're ready to make our visualization. Uh, I'm going to put these guys back in. And now again, our options is where we define everything. And my labels are going to stay the same for sure, because that's the years that are at the bottom. My data sets, now I want to have two data sets. And we looked at how to do this before, um, but let's go ahead and do this again. So um, my data now is not called data, it's called lower emissions. And I've got some just basic fill color here. And let's go ahead and just run this and make sure there's our data, that looks great. I'm gonna change this color so that we can easily tell the difference. So there's one piece of data here, and then we can um, add a comma, and then let's just copy and paste this whole guy here. So we need the curly brackets. And then instead of lower emissions, we can make this higher emissions, and let's change the color so we can see it. Awesome. So now we get these two sets of data plotted in the same graph, and we can see this like diverging because of the different emissions, predicted emissions levels. Um, there's one other thing that I think we really want to do here. You'll notice our legend says undefined and undefined, um, and that's because we haven't specified a label for these data sets. Um, so the label here does not get applied to um, to the side or anywhere else. It's just for this legend and for when you hover over your data. So my label, I'm going to list this as lower emissions. Don't forget a comma between all these elements here. And then this label will be um, higher emissions. Great. So now I think this makes it much clearer. It's really easy to tell which is which if we hover over. Let's see. Oh. A little finicky. There we go. So it'll show me higher emissions labeled here in the tooltip um, and the lower emissions. If I can find it, I think because I have my radius. Oh, I changed the radius here to be zero, which makes it a little fiddly to find. Um, but we can see now that it's labeled. So um, I would encourage you then to take this example, try adding a third data set or a fourth. There's lots here in the, um, in the same file that you might want to try to map um, and see how those look. And then in the next example, we'll add a few more things to this idea and improve our chart a little bit.